We work with the lines of business, and Capital One has probably eight or nine lines of business to um, help them understand the requirements for managing their data. Um, we serve as a second line function that also goes in and checks to make sure they are managing their data correctly. And in this role, we work with the um, lines of business to bring in um, new capabilities and um, <clears throat> that can be used along the, across the book of business and work with them to get them started. And that's what we did here with the knowledge graph. So what we're gonna talk to you about today. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, we took a, the customer 360, we have a master uh, customer record. We uh, attach it to an ontology and a knowledge graph. So we enabled different views so that we can improve access provisioning and analytics. And in process of doing that, we use some um, tools that we created in-house where we enhanced some definitions, we standardized metadata, improved metadata quality, and improved search. Oh, am I not close enough? Okay. <clears throat> and include and improved search and discovery. So um, Bethany's group did all the work. Um, I didn't, and so I'm not gonna take any credit for it. So I'm going to let Bethany go ahead and talk about the work. First, let's start off with this word ontology. Some of you here may know what it means. Um, some of you may not. So let's make sure we're all on the same page. Think of an ontology as a glossary, a glossary of concepts and terms, uh, but with the added benefit of really rich relationships of connections of links. So this thing is made up of that thing, and that thing is related to these other things. Um, if you use customer as an example, you can say a customer is identified by a number, a customer has a financial account, uh, or a velocity. There we go. A customer belongs to a household. Uh, these concepts, these terms and relationships can all be included in an ontology. But an ontology by itself doesn't have a whole lot of value. It really doesn't solve any of our problems. It's when you connect the ontology to data that you can start seeing insights and, and improve your search, improve our metadata, as we'll talk about here. Um, and that's when you talk about how an ontology and a knowledge graph can work together. So the, the quick and dirty of it is, uh, if you develop an ontology using semantic web standards, then you can uh, build a, an enterprise way for standardizing on concepts and definitions. If you use technology that are also based on those same semantic web standards, you can connect the ontology to the data using a knowledge graph, and then it's queryable. Um, you can use it to uh, do your analytics and improve the metadata. Uh, so the customer ontology pilot that we did, a knowledge graph pilot, um, the first step was actually in motion about six months before the official kickoff of the pilot, and that was to develop the customer ontology. Um, and we used a couple of methods for doing that. Um, we looked at the data itself to see what business concepts were captured there. We did card sort exercises, so in some of your uh, traditional taxonomy type processes. We conducted interviews, and we iteratively developed this ontology with our customer partners. Um, from there, our, actually not from there, but in parallel, our metadata and semantics team did a couple of things for us. They first set a baseline for the metadata quality for our customer data, uh, and then they developed some really cool tools that helped us automatically classify and relate the data to the ontology. Uh, once those things were in place, we kicked off the pilot. The pilot itself lasted about three months. Uh, we connected the, the data in the ontology using a knowledge graph solution that we had a, uh, a test um, license for. And then we updated the metadata in our data catalog. We either updated it or augmented it. Uh, and then we measured it. And so we looked to see what impact we had and then the residual effects. The results were pretty impactful. Um, when we showed this to the customer team, they were pretty wowed by it um, and how easily we were able to uh, improve the, the quality of their metadata. Of the customer-related attributes in our data catalog, we updated 86% of them. And this, in turn, improved the metadata quality for, for customer data by um, over 200%. Depending on how you slice and dice search, so there are a bunch of different search metrics that uh, you can, can use. We used four of them. Uh, we estimated that we improved the, the search experience by about uh, 14 to 24%, meaning we presented more relevant results with the highest relevant, uh, relevant ones at the top. Uh, yeah, and I think that's really important because one of the issues the data analysts have at Capital One is finding the data they want quickly 
understanding that data and then moving on with it. Um, in prior life, before we started doing some of this, the search would bring back lots and lots of data. The metadata wasn't 100% clear, so they had to search and really try to understand. And one of the important things we want to make sure at Capital One that they're using the right data for the right reason, for the right purpose, and they have access to it. So this really helps. Our uh, immediate next steps really built, uh, build on the successes of the pilot. Work is already underway to integrate our data catalog with ontology, knowledge graph, and our classification tools. Um, we are also using those tools to help infer data sensitivity, um, as well as information around consumer consent, which is a pretty hot topic for a lot of us in the room right now. Um, we are uh, looking to make our ontology infrastructure more official with the move to production. And from a data management perspective, data governance, we are uh, in the process of incorporating ontology requirements into our enterprise data management standards. Um, this includes registering ontologies uh, in support of our federated approach to curation of ontology and development of ontology, um, incorporating data quality rules into the ontology or knowledge graph, uh, and including data criticality or derived data. I mean, it's world's your oyster here. So we're trying to be very um, uh, pragmatic about uh, how much we are incorporating into our standards and when so that we're not biting off uh, too much at one time. From a knowledge graph perspective, some takeaways for you. I have a few up here, but I'll just speak to two of them, actually, so we have some time for Q&A. Um, it is not practical or scalable to manually map large volumes of data to an ontology. So we are really doubling down on our ability to automatically classify, uh, to relate, to infer, um, and the team actually, I think that's the, what they enjoy working on the most, to be honest with you. Um, visualization, everybody would love like Tableau-esque type dashboards to uh, have insights and metrics around the ontology itself, the knowledge graph itself, um, and then be able to uh, use that to help us further uh, define the ontologies, to see those insights, and uh, help improve our metadata quality. Um, but with that, I mean, I know we were pretty quick, but we wanted to save time for our questions. Hi, so I'm, I'm uh, curious if you could maybe give an example of the, the type of data. I don't really know what customer 360 data means. And you know, maybe just like a concrete example of how um, the ontology that you constructed really improved the quality? Sure. So uh, our customer data is uh, uh, anything from phone numbers to addresses, and you know a customer could probably have many, many addresses. Um, and it's a looking, as Pat said, there's lots of products and services, Capital One, a lot of the other financial institutions as well. So customer 360 is that one view from the customer perspective, instead of coming at it from a product or service perspective, like Bethany has the saver card, it's more of a Bethany, and then I have a saver card, or I have a bank account, or I've, it's, it's that type of view. Um, and it can, so it rationalizes and consolidates all of the, the, the attributes that you use to describe my relationship with that product all the way up to that, that customer level. Um, does that explain the data part of it? Yeah, okay. Um, and you said the, the actual use case of how, how, we are, how we're how doing this. How we improve the quality. Yeah, how we improve the quality. So uh, at the physical level, we, our data, uh, everyone's re, re required to register their data, and you can end up seeing something that says like ACCT underscore NUM, or fully spelled out account number, or camel case account number, or uh, any other account identifier instead of account number. And what we are able to do is all the registrations that were linked to a kind of a business concept that said account number, we standardize on the definition, the description, and we link them. So you can search by account number and bring back all the ones that are mapped. They all have the same descriptions, they're more searchable. So now play that forward a little bit to the new policy on um, privacy regulations. If you have to go in and remove people's information from privacy, you don't have to go system by system or application by application to find that data. You go to the customer ontology, see, give me all the account numbers for this person, Pat Branham, and then we know exactly where to go to get that data. So as you start to play it forward and some of the things you have to deal with in your business, it starts to add a lot of value. I have a question. Uh, how does this differ from uh, master data management, and is that a different discipline within the business, and do you guys work together if it is? Yeah, so the customer 360 is a master file. 
um, but it masters just certain attributes like name, address, phone numbers, email addresses, et cetera. Um, we do work with the customer group. It's the same group that we worked with for this. And what we do now is say, okay, here's the master record of customer. Now let's link all their information across the business to this customer master record. So again, we we'll know all your account identifications. We know your transactions across the line of business. So Capital One does credit cards. We have banking. We have commercial. So you could be a, you know, have those three different kinds of activities with Capital One. So we only, so this is the linkage to all that information about that peop, those people in that master file. Does that make sense? Very similar to master data management, just little nuances. I almost think it's just a little bit more trendy than <laughs> master data management. <laughs> I told you we were fun. <laughs> Hi, uh, you mentioned visualization. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I see where you are, and I want to make uh, eye I'm right here. There I'm, you are, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, these dashboard tableau like dashboards are you guys rolling your own like building your own visualizations or are you using some package software for that um so we have not seen package software that does what we're looking for yet um so internally about two years ago we we developed some visualization you know you, your basic you know nodes and edges type you know zoom in zoom out um we want to go a little bit further than that we actually want to have the insights generated from us uh within within the dashboard um so just a little bit more sophistication but we have not seen anything there yet so we do tend to build before we buy um but that doesn't mean we're not open to something that might be available in the market. Hi, I'm Arthur Keen with uh, Tiger Graph. I've got a question. Are you virtualizing the knowledge graph using Federation, or are you actually materializing the customer 360? Great question. For this, we ended up materializing it, um, but the plan is to virtualize, and we want to virtualize as much as we can. It'll be It'll be use case specific um, and, and how we do move forward with that, but we, we are promoting the virtualization over the, um, and actually pulling the information into the graph itself. Hello, um, you did say you automated your mapping mm -hmm. and you developed, since you said you prefer build over buy, so how did you automate your mapping? <laughs> Well, luckily, I brought my team with me. <laughs> well, some people on my team, and we can talk to you a little bit about um, what that uh, machine looks like. But uh, it is, uh, we call it the semantic classifier. Pat hates. I hate that name. Anyway. <laughs> that name. <laughs> so we're, we're looking for new names for the semantic classifier. Um, but uh, we can chat with, about that offline. Um, hi. Uh, what are the challenges you had in terms of data standardization, especially for like unstructured data? Challenges we have for data well, guess, management standardization? Yeah, so standardization is, a, is um, difficult across the company, the size of Capital One and the businesses that have been there for a while. So um, I think we're trying to standardize where appropriate, and when it's not appropriate, um, let them have their own terms. I think the knowledge graph helps us do some of that, but there are some enterprise-like calculations, definitions that will be standardized. Um, we've not spent a lot of time on unstructured data yet. No, we, we, unstructured tends to be kind of part of the conversations that we have, but it hasn't been the focus on what we've been talking about. Biggest challenge, I think that, you know, Pat kind of said, like, let them have what they have. There's a lot of ego when you try to start touching people's stuff. And <laughs> I think there's this, this, this uh, art form to trying to get everyone to agree on, well, what is that one standard? But the beauty of ontology is that you don't necessarily all have to agree on one concept. Well, one label. Uh, you agree conceptually on what the thing is, and then sometimes you can implement alternative labels and people can kind of call what, the, what it is. Yeah. Otherwise, you just let them extend off the ontology. You have a, it's kind of a domain-specific ontology. So if you think about like a hub and spoke model, you've got your standard in the center, and then you allow a domain or a localized version that, that extends off and says, y'all, here's our exception to the rule. Good morning. Good morning. Um, basic question. You started up front saying that you're part of risk management. Mm -hmm. How did you engage with the executives within that organization to sponsor this effort? So um, that's an interesting question. So at risk management, um, being part of risk management, everything we do at Capital One, the underlying you know, premise is the data. So um, we tend to get a lot of buy-in for things to do with the data to make the data better, more accessible. 
I mean, one of the biggest complaints we hear at Capital One from our data analysts is, I can't find the data I want. I can't get to it. So if we can show that kind of value, we tend to get sponsorship. Um, because data is so important to Capital One, we tend to get sponsorship. But also, we worked with the executive that owns the customer, uh, Masterfile. And um, she also owns the privacy and the regulations for California and how we're going to implement that in 2020. So those kinds of, of real business cases um, tend to get a sponsorship. I hope that answered your question. Uh, hello, Atanas Kierko from Ontotex. I want to ask you, uh, do you plan to use uh, reasoning uh, to deal with uh, things like, like in your ontology, you can have relationship types and more general relationships and more specific relationships and the inverse and whatever else. So this would be, allow you to both yeah, get, get customer 360 view on a general level, if that's what you want, but still be able to dive in it and so yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. We're, we are definitely doing that, you know, top down, bottom up approach to the reasoning. In fact, I'm looking at Brian Donahue, who's a couple rows behind you, he's one of our ontologists, and he's like shaking his head violently. <laughs> but yes, uh, we are looking uh, to, to use that type of reasoning. In fact, that came up just last week, again, privacy use case, where legal really wants to see kind of that big grouping and clusters of privacy concepts. Um, but then when you look at, uh, you know, within our customer team, um, they want it down at the, the most granular level. So absolutely. Yeah. So thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you, everybody.